a couple of days ago I saw this tweet and because I'm a fake fan I was actually not that familiar with Hamdi other than knowing he's got an upcoming collab with Skrillex meaning I took it upon myself to actually compare the songs especially as a producer so in this video we'll discover who is Hamdi what's his approach to production but more importantly I'm But first, if you want even the slightest chance for people on Reddit or Twitter to criticize your music and say all your stuff sounds the same, you better get it onto Spotify or TikTok, which is where this video sponsor comes in. That's right, DistroKid is a service that you can use to put your music onto online stores and streaming services. This means your music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon, and yes, you heard me right earlier, TikTok. The amount of artists blowing up off of that platform is kind of crazy and you can get your music into their catalog giving you a better chance of kickstarting your career. You never know when some TikToker is going to find your song, do a little dance to it and even have Horace here join along. The best part though is unlike other distribution platforms, DistroKid collects your earnings and payments and sends 100% of those to you. And you don't even pay per upload, you only pay once a year. And it's only $23. You're telling me 23 and Horus is included for free? <gasps> Say no more. Sign up now. Oh, and get even more of a discount since you watch my channel. Use my VIP link below and shout out DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to Hamdi. So, on my first listen, the Redditors and Twitterverse wasn't exactly wrong. We listen, we listen. Woo! You can do so much with a saw wave, holy. Let's check Skanka. Hey, that one sounds way more similar. The drops do have extremely similar sounds, very similar flows, with slight tweaks. But... That is a weak and surface level argument. It's like saying every Chris Lake song or Tech House song sounds the exact same. The coolest thing about Hamdi is his music transcends the complexity and focuses more on vibe. And what the Redditors don't realize is that Hamdi's combined a bunch of UK based genres like bassline, grime, and OG dubstep. I listen to Immortal. He's definitely different. Like he's, he's got a genre, definitely a different sound. Who is Hamdi? If you didn't guess by the sound of his songs, he's from the UK. And this recently released Forbes article states that he began producing at the age of 12, primarily exploring grime beats. It's funny because this Forbes article says he was then quickly attracted to United States side of dubstep. And it says particularly by the likes of Skrillex, Knife Party, and Flux Pavilion. But Knife Party's from Australia and Flux is also from the UK. So Forbes... Anyway, carrying on. Hamdi, of Tunisian and English descent. After four years of being inspired in that genre, he found the sounds of bassline, which he describes as high energy and fresh. From there, he started to focus on dubstep after producing bassline for a few years. And while dubstep proves to be among his first entry into dance music, he says he doesn't plan to only produce that genre. He's garnered support from electronic music heavyweights like Skrillex, Knife Party, Porter Robinson, Fred Again, and has a pretty big presence in the UK underground scene. From Apps like DJ Easy, Scream, Cheryl, and Mala. So that's Hamdi. What about the producer's perspective? To be honest, as producers, we're all trying to find our own sound and trying to find a sense of unity within all of our songs. From the Forbes article as well, Hamdi states that sometimes we'll work on a song and it's completely different than what we imagine. Even me, the other day, I wanted to make this moody San Holo type thing and ended up with this as the drop. He says, I try not to put much pressure on myself to make a certain type of tune. If I start with a dubstep tune, it ends up as UK Garage. If it's a banger, it doesn't matter. Being from the UK, he's more dialed into that style of rave culture, which values vibe over everything. And as a producer, one of the biggest compliments you can get is, I immediately knew this was your song. Except I'm like the worst example of this because I make tons of different stuff. But you watching, 
you probably love it when somebody says that. But when that moment comes where you have your breakthrough song, it makes sense to repeat what you did because that seems to work. Now, there might be a bigger issue to talk about when producers get pigeonholed into a sound because of what sells or what they're known for. Take Getter for an example. When he broke out of the bro step style he was known for and released his album Visceral, he famously had to cancel that tour because a bunch of whiny bro step babies wasn't vibing with the new direction. Do you think producers should be forced into continuing to make what made them famous or are they allowed to have creative freedom? But going back to Hamdi's sound, a lot of these lukewarm takes comes from the common combination of sounds that actually just make up a genre. His specific combination has very prominent elements, the saw bass, 16th rhythm flow, chromatic intervals between the notes. In my opinion, it's dubstep's equivalent to Tech House. And it's necessary to have sounds like this because not every bass show you go to has to be an assault of robot noises and machine guns. Plus, there's a really deep culture behind Hamdi's sound. He incorporates grime and bassline, two UK staples, which to a non-producer might sound very samey. And this isn't limited to sounds from the UK either. Peekaboo and Rez have probably gotten some of the same criticism because of how similar their songs sound to each other. And in response to the Redditors, of course, this style of music is meant to be listened to in a live setting. And even if any of these reasons still aren't enough to back up what I'm saying, I'm about to bust out the uh, um actually. Cause um actually, in counting, the bass line is perfectly complemented by a vocal hook that gives differentiation. In Selecta, the initial flow changes in the B section, and the bass line is more of a focus instead of having it play alongside of a vocal. Boom, Selecta and Counting, different songs. What about his newest one, Criminal with Zed's Dead? He combines his flow with Zed's Dead's signature sound design. In Immortal, the flow's not 16th notes, it's 8th notes. I don't know, the focus of the drop is on the drums, and it's way more chopped up than his other songs. In OK, the BPM is totally different. In Yum, it's it's a yeah. very cool four to the floor tune with both driving and ambient yeah. sound. And you might say, oh my God, these are his old songs, Ash. Little bro, these came out this yeah. year. Go even farther back and you get jazzy tunes like Homesick. Meaning the point of all of this is don't take opinions from Reddit or Twitter. Those online Andes probably just listened to two of his songs and came to this conclusion. It's the equivalent of the type of person who immediately has an opinion on something, but they just read the headline of an article. And to be fair, I am jealous because he's able to have his stuff sound repetitive and unified without sounding boring. And I wish I could do that. Maybe my mistake is even making this video, trying to challenge an opinion from Reddit of all places. But I think the more important conversation I want to have is that as producers, we're all just trying to find our own unique sound. We're trying to find where we fit in this vast landscape of music. This is all while dealing with the creation of something that at the end of the day is subjective. Each listener has many different perspectives and will most likely find joy in something that others find awful. So I think it's more that we focus on expressing our best selves. And much like Hamdi, pull from your influences. And I'm not just talking about, ooh, what are your top three artists? Are there any genres outside of the one you make that you love? What about genres you don't listen to at all? Are you open to discovering something new? I've recently done this with J-Rock and K-Pop. <laughs> Is there a show or festival that really made an impact of your life? Something that you'll remember you have formed like core memories with your group of friends. I remember going to the Mothership tour. And this was before Jack U officially formed and Skrillex played out a bunch of those songs. It like blew my mind. Was there a soundtrack during a particularly important part of your life? I remember the albums I had on repeat when I was transitioning my life from moving from my small town to Toronto. There was a completely different soundtrack when I was graduating high school and the first year I actually failed college. What's more important is when you find your inspiration, your influences. It doesn't matter if all your songs start to sound similar, as long as the vibe is there and you're honest to yourself. And even if you're here, you just listen to music, you have no idea about production. Appreciation for the artistry and growth that each producer brings. Recognizing the depth and diversity within the whole body of their work, not just two songs, that goes a long way. Now go make some bangers. Peace. 
We're coming up to my one year anniversary of me going full time on YouTube and everybody who has supported me through Patreon has made that fully possible. So thank you. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, feel free to join the VIPs on there. I got tons of bonuses for producers, in-depth tutorials, project files, serum presets, and that all just goes to support the channel and allows me to keep making videos like this. That's it for me. I'll see you next time. Peace!